operations are one of the most critical and hazardous tasks routinely carried out on ships. Mooring arrangements, mooring equipments and weather conditions differ from port to port and careful pre-planning before any mooring operation is essential. In a typical situation, the master receives a message at sea that the next port of call has been revised. Pre-planning starts at this stage. The navigating officer starts gathering information about this port. He consults various publications like the Guide to Port Entry which provides accurate and comprehensive information covering more than 6,000 ports laid out in a logical sequence. Sailing directions, which are often referred to as pilots, assist the navigating officers by providing essential information on all aspects of local navigation. The master calls a pre-arrival meeting and discusses the mooring plan with the ship's officers. Port specific information available from the vessel's previous visits to the port provides valuable information. A risk assessment of the mooring operations should be completed at regular intervals to ensure safety of personnel. As the ship nears the port, all bridge and engine controls are checked as per the pre-arrival checklists. On deck, the windlass and mooring winches are tried out, brakes tested, mooring ropes checked and laid. All communication systems are tested. When a pilot is on board, mooring operations must be discussed and agreed with him before the vessel arrives at the berth. Officers in charge of mooring must clearly understand the mooring plan and all possible preparations must be made on the vessel in preparation for mooring. For a ship to remain secure at its berth, the moorings must overcome a variety of forces made up from the effects of wind the effect of which greatly increases with the increase of freeboard and is at times a critical factor for safe mooring. Current, in case of which forces become significant when the clearance under the keel is small relative to the draft. The ship then acts as a major obstruction to the flow of current, thus magnifying its effect. Surges from passing ships. Rise and fall of tides. Waves and swell. The mooring pattern must be able to cope with environmental forces from any direction. The best pattern can be achieved by splitting these forces into their transverse and fore and aft components and then placing mooring lines as symmetrically as possible about the midship line of the ship. Breast lines provide the bulk of the transverse restraint against off the berth forces. Breast lines should be as much as possible at right angles to the ship's fore and aft line and as far forward and aft as possible. Back springs provide the largest proportion of the longitudinal restraint. Spring lines should be as parallel as possible to the fore and aft line of the ship. It should be noted that spring lines provide restraint in two directions, forward and aft, and only one set of springs will be stressed at any particular moment. Headlines and stern lines, because of their direction, have the effect of providing some restraint 
against both longitudinal and transverse forces, but actually contribute less to the overall mooring strength than is commonly supposed. Very short lengths of line should be avoided when possible as such lines will take a greater proportion of the total load when movement of the ship occurs. Most vessels have a combination of synthetic and wire mooring ropes. Synthetic fibre ropes are best suited for head and stern lines, whilst wire ropes are most suited for spring lines and breast lines. Wire ropes and synthetic ropes have different elasticity and should never be mixed. That is, two or more lines leading in the same direction should always be of the same material. Wire moorings attached with fibre rope tails provide an effective mooring system by introducing a degree of elasticity. Steel wire ropes should be regularly greased and inspected for wear and tear. Synthetic ropes must be kept clear of chemicals, stored in a well-ventilated area and visually inspected at regular intervals. The windlass and winches should be lubricated and inspected at regular intervals and in accordance to the vessel's maintenance schedule. Single point mooring or SPM is used to secure tankers for carrying out loading and unloading operations offshore. The SPM is attached to a swivel mechanism which allows the ship to swing around the buoy in response to wind and tides. Mooring and unmooring operations, including tug handling and anchoring, are potentially dangerous operations and must be carried out under the watchful supervision of an officer in direct contact with the bridge. Adequate precautions, including but not limited to the following, must be taken. Always use proper personal protective equipment including safety helmets, safety gloves and shoes. Safety goggles are to be worn during anchoring. Stand clear of all lines under load. Keep well clear of the snapback zone. Do not step into a coil or a loop or attempt to stop a line that has taken charge with your hands or feet. Always ensure that the winch operator can see the person in charge. Operation of controls and handles must be made in a slow and deliberate movement, ensuring that the intended functions are carried out in a controlled manner. Do not leave the windlass or winches running and unattended. The mooring area should be free of litter and well lit at night. 